Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, are you doing that for Jesus? Please do it for Jesus. Let's shout hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I think almost everybody here in the chapel this morning, it was one year ago that I saw you last. <laughs> it was exactly one year ago that I saw you last. All right, we are going to wish ourselves Happy New Year one more time. I know that Reverend Chris has led us to, you know, work on one another. But this is the way we are going to do it. You are going to rise up. You are going to hug minimum five people. Female to female, male to male. <laughs> but if you now know that you have your female friend here, you have your male friend here, anyway, you can hug each other. Yeah. But we are going to hug minimum five people and say, Happy New Year. In this new year, you are going to break new ground. Shall we be on our feet and let's move around and hug one another and say, Happy New Year. In this new year, you are going to break new ground. Amen, amen. It's all right, it's all right. Amen. Let's, let's, let's hold it. Let's hold it. Let's hold it. You know some people, their body is so stiff. <laughs> they are not romantic. They can't express themselves. So if anybody is not standing up, go to that person, pull him or her up, and say, I love you. I want to wish you Happy New Year. And in this new year, you will break new ground. You will break new ground. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. I never expected that we would be this many in the chapel. If I had instructed before that we will only engage the 111 women because I know that we will not be this many. But when I came into the chapel and I saw all of us, I was so excited, you know, to see our faces one more time, particularly in the new year, the year 2024. It takes the power of God to cross over. Let me tell you, it is not easy to cross over from a previous year to a new year. Just like it was difficult for the Israelites to pass through the Red Sea to get to the other side on their way to Canaan, so it is difficult. Like I was standing in the choir, some people die in the night of 31st, of course. Some people die that night, so they couldn't cross over. But here we are today, it's the 7th of January. We cross over successfully. Can you shout a big hallelujah to the Lord? Amen, amen. All right, let me say this before I bring the word of the Lord to us. This is the book we are reading for January. We've been announcing this book before we left for break, as at that time it was still in the press. But to the glory of God, this book came out the 26th of December, and it was dedicated virtually. On the 28th, our vice chancellor was there. A few other individuals were there, virtually to dedicate it. And we have decided that this is a book we are reading for the month of January. Somebody said, because we'll be writing the exam, okay, we can extend our own to February. So we are engaging this book. It's about 167 pages book. Um, our goal is to engage minimum 1,000 readers particularly from Bowen University, and several people have pre-ordered. As of last night, we had 321 people who have pre-ordered and paid, but unfortunately, only 67 out of that 321 are from Bowen University. So I guess, maybe, because we have not resumed, we want everybody to get this book and to read this book. We are going to create spaces for review at the end of the month, maybe in different units, maybe at the devotion in the Hall of Residence. It's a very simple book to read. The format adopted in writing it will make it interesting to read. So I want to encourage you to go ahead and get your copy and begin to read. 
one of our past students came to pick a result, and she got this year chapter. I started reading this book. The book is interesting. That was on, I think that was on Thursday. That was on Thursday. So I want you to get your copy. Now, those who have pre-ordered, please, you will get your own from my office because there is a list that contains all the name of those who pre-order. So don't bother to go to favor. Don't trouble favor with that. Those who want to get afresh, who have not paid uh, before now, you want to get it afresh after service, those are the ones that should go uh, to get their own from favor. But if you have pre-order, you have paid, uh, your own has been reserved in my office. So let's do that. Uh, I've written, this is the eighth book I will write. But like I told people, I discovered that almost all my books I've written, I gave almost all the copies out, almost free. So I made up my mind, this one, I won't give anybody free, even including my wife. My wife paid for her own copy. Carries pay for his own copy. So if my wife could pay, don't expect me to give you any free copy at all. So I won't give anybody free copy. In fact, the only people I have given free copy are the principal officers, and it's because somebody paid for it. Somebody paid for about 10 copy free. So just give it to people that you say you want to give it to. So uh, I'm hoping that nobody will get this book free. And uh, we account for every copy. So please go ahead and get your copy is 1,000 Naira 500. So you can approach favor at the end of the service to get your copy. I actually was saying that maybe my wife should not, but I said I will pay for it. You know the Bible say, buy wisdom and sell it not. It is what you don't pay for. You just throw it somewhere. I will read it later. But something that commanded 1,500 from your pocket. You want to check what actually is inside. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, what's our theme for 2024? You have seen it all around you. It's already in the chapel arena. Uh, the last two years, we did stickers, door stickers, but we discovered that we are wasting our money. So this year, we just did, I think, about 50 pieces of door sticker for specific individual. Um, staff living in the hostel, offices that will be on their doors and all that, uh, since probably we don't value that, so we didn't do that this year. But at least we have enough to remind you all the time of the theme for this year, breaking new ground. Uh, I will be doing the extensive exposition of that theme starting next Sunday, by the grace of God. We hope that by that time, we have a full house. But this morning, what I want to do is what I title to Precursors. I title to it Precursors for Breaking New Ground. Precursor simply means something that comes before another thing. Something that you must begin to do if you want to really break new ground. Something you must adjust yourself to in preparation for breaking new ground. So that is why I title it Precursors for Breaking New Ground. And I hope that at the end of at the end of this year, when you look back, you will actually be able to point to areas that you have shifted, areas that you have gained ground, areas that you will even ask yourself, how did I get to this point? Because God himself said in our text, in Isaiah chapter 43, say 43 verse 18, right? He said, remember not the former things. Tell your friend, remember not the former things. Tell your friends, last year is gone and is gone. Remember not the former things. The Bible says, neither consider the things of old. And I'm really praying that God will give you capacity and grace to really forget the past. <laughs> I saw something funny on a WhatsApp platform and I copied it on my own. 
He said, as we move towards New Year, learn to forget the past, especially the credit collectors. <laughs> if anybody is where you forget it, let him go. Somebody is there, chaplain, that one will be hard, though. <laughs> Praise the Lord. All right, that's just a digression. But the truth of the matter is, don't live with the memory of the past. Don't live with the limitation of last year. Don't live with the disappointment of last year. Don't live with the stagnation you experienced last year. Let it go. Remember not the former things. Neither consider the things of old. That is verse 18. Verse 19 now said, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Tell your friend, now. New thing will spring forth in your life. He said, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? He says, I will make water available where? Where? That is the unlikely place for water to come up. I will make water available in the desert. And what again? I will even make a way in the wilderness. You know wilderness? Where you have thick trees that you can't navigate your path. He said, I will make a way. God did it before he can do it again. Yes, sir. For this Jesus Christ, Hebrew 13, 8, is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I am expecting to break new ground. I don't know about you. I will break new ground. You know, with... Within the context of the university, we said we want to break new ground in our five core values. Godliness, excellence, innovation, entrepreneurship, and social responsibility. There are a lot. And I thank God for that prayer that uh, Femi led us. All of us will swim in that realm. We will, we will ride on that wave that will break new ground. Some of you, your spiritual life will jack up this year. Some of you have been wondering, I don't know how this brother prayed. You will, you will be caught up in that kind of realm. That's godliness. Your spiritual foundation will be adjusted this session and this year. You will break new ground in godliness. It will not be difficult for you to live godly any longer. Some people, it's difficult to live a godly life. Sin is just, it's just trailing them. Oh, they said they are tired of sin. This year, God will break you free. Amen. In excellence, God will move you forward. Amen. Excellence is an attitude. It's a spirit. When it rests on you, it shows. It shows. It shows. As for these four men, they were found to be ten times better they attended the same university, but there is this thing that set them apart. It is called the spirit of excellence. Innovations, creativity, bathing something that is uncommon. Some of us, God is set to bath innovations, to bath new things through us. So open up your mind and let God pour his spirit in you. Some of you, you will start your business this year. You will set up your company this year. You will set up a thriving organization this year. This year, there will emerge young CEOs. CEOs that are not just in name. You know, a lot of you, you just write CEO. <laughs> you know, it's good. Positive confession is good. But it will, it will, it will materialize this year. That money will be spinning to your account and you are in your hostel in Bowen University and money is just spinning to your account because God will have lifted up your organization. So be ready. And in social responsibility, you will be channels through which the blessings of God will flow to other people. The Bible says, He will build my city so you will be city builders. That's what it means to be involved in social responsibility. You are decorating your environment. 
You are decorating your community. That is what God is said to do in our lives in this year 2024. So that is an overview of what it means to break new ground. So we are trusting God that new Daniels will be arising on this campus. It's an era. It's an era of the emergence of Daniels. God is going to make a brand new Daniels out of you. Many of you don't understand what it means to be a Daniel of your own generation. Don't worry. By the grace of God, the next two Sunday schools will be a digression from uh, the normal Sunday school manual. We are going to be studying the making of Daniels, part one and part two in Sunday school, next Sunday and the one after. That is by the instruction of the vice chancellor. So that you will know that God is set to make a new Daniel out of us. Daniel served for government. They didn't find any reason to remove him. They gang up politically. They gang up socially. Against him, they failed. The spirit was too much upon him. That spirit of excellence was too heavy upon him. You know what we are trusting God for? That after we have all spread everywhere in different labor markets, a CEO will be talking to the CEO and say, I have this young lady in my organization. She is sharp and smart. She has this particular lifestyle. She told me that she finished from a university called Bowen. Ah, another one will say, I have another one like that. She also told me she finished from Bowen University. Another one will say, ah, there is one law graduate that I engage in my firm. I think they have common traits. They have common trade. So that is what we are trusting God for. Now all over the world, they will say, Bowen graduate, they have common trade. They have strong work ethics. They have sound character. Integrity, solid integrity. Praise the Lord. You see, I shared this testimony yesterday. One of us. How many of us know Toby Sinaj? You know Toby? Okay. That's to tell you that this thing is a possibility. That a spirit can rest upon us that will be unique to this environment. Yes, and that's not the first testimony. People have testified about so many Bowen students who work for them. You know, our boss was away and they handed over the office to her to manage the office before the boss returns. So this day, about uh, uh, maybe three weeks plus now before we went on break, you know, she didn't arrive at the office at the normal time, maybe 8. So the people were bothered that they didn't see her in the office. So they couldn't, they called all her line. It was not good. They couldn't see anybody to reach her. So they checked her file and saw my name as one of the referees. So they called me. I was in the management meeting. They called me that morning. Now, with, are you reverend? I can be, yes. Uh, so, 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 working with us. We couldn't see her in the office. And this is very, very unusual of her. So we are bothered. We have tried to reach her. We couldn't get her place. How can we reach her? I tried all our line too. I couldn't get through. I have to call the mom. You know, do you have any other? I don't know the person she's staying with. I don't have their contact. Another, another, another. Now, to cut the long story short, shortly after, maybe an hour plus after that, so Toby called me and explained the reason that the work was so much on her that she didn't even have time to do her ear. So she now made up her mind that before the year runs out, this Sunday I will do my hair my ear. So she went somewhere. It took her time, maybe towards 11 before she could finish. So she said she cannot return to her house. She now looked for a place to stay there, hoping that she will rush to the house in the morning, get dressed and get to the office. She met traffic and the phone uh, went down. So nobody could reach. She could not reach anybody or another until she got home, maybe around after 10 in the morning to get her phone. So that was how everybody could reach her again. But where am I going? Do you know where I'm going? that you are not in the office one day at the normal time and everybody was bothered that this is very, very unusual that by now, with what we know about her, to me, that was a good testimony. What about you? Huh? Are you that organized? Eh, if it's what I do, say, eh, this is just 10 now, let's still give her time. Normally, you could need to be here until 11. Don't bother yourself. <laughs> that is what we are talking about. 
punctuality, even to lectures. To lecture, lectures start at 8. You are walking to your lecture room at 9.30. Two hours lecture. You have missed one hour, 30 minutes. Chapu, you are dragging your feet. They say we are meeting at the bus stop by 7. They are waiting for only you. Eh? Some of you have that kind of habit. You have agreed that we will pick you up at 7 at this bus stop. They waited there two hours. They are calling you. You know, this little, little thing, there is a way they rub on you in an overall manner that affects your future endeavors. So I was so excited. Praise the Lord. So a spirit will come upon us that will bath excellence in us. So begin to locate areas that you want to break new ground. But for today, I want to quickly share with you precursors for breaking new ground. They are like preparatory exhortation. Now, in Hosea chapter 10 verse 12, the Bible says, in Hosea chapter 10 verse 12, the Bible says, So to yourself, in righteousness, reap the fruit of mercy. Break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord until He come and reign. Which version is it? That should be KJV. So to yourself in righteousness, reap in mercy. Break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord till He come and reign righteousness upon you. If you want to break new ground, you need capacity to do that, right? Right? You want to break new ground, you need capacity to do that because it's work. Breaking new ground is work. So it's not something that you just fold your hands and uh, something will just come and fall on your lap. You have to be involved. You have to be involved. It's like a man that is set to run a race. You've got to prepare yourself. So that is why the Bible says for you to break your fallow ground, you need to first of all begin to sow to yourself in righteousness because a harvest is coming. But as long as the earth remains, seed time must come first before harvest. So there is a need to begin to sow to your life, preparing yourself and building yourself up for the adventure of breaking new ground. Because it's a collaborative work. God will do his own. You will be involved in doing your own if you want to break even. So, there are things you need to sow to your life in preparing yourself for breaking new ground. So, that is why I call them precursors. So, where am I going? You've got to develop capacity to go on this adventure of breaking new ground. Because you want to break something, right? You want to break something, so you've got to have capacity. You've got to have capacity to go on that adventure. You've got to have capacity to go on the adventure of breaking new ground, of venturing into things that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it come to the mind of any man. That which God has prepared for those who love him. But it will begin to reveal. So, breaking new ground will come on the platform of revelation. But you've got to set yourself on your rampart. Habakkuk said, I will set myself upon my rampart. And I will watch to say what he will say to me. And what my response will be. And he said, write the vision. So, there is the setting of yourself. There is the preparation that you need to make. You know, a lot of times, we only admire the product. We only admire the output. We don't bother to be mindful of the process that led to the output. Your season will come. But before your season comes, you must gather the cloud. It is only when the cloud is full that the rain comes. Oh, yes. Yes, so that gathering of the cloud is a work that is involved. See, uh, 
most of these people that we admire in life, they have done their own preparations. So they have now gotten to the level that they can set their life on autopilot. Oh, yes. But it is when a life gets to the autopilot and is just running on his own because he has done the preparatory work, we now begin to admire. Hey, don't see your car, don't see your car. Hey, 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 all these ones, they have done their work. They have not gotten to the autopilot. Do your own. See, till tomorrow, you can, you can mimic those you can. It doesn't mean that you carry the capacity. No, it doesn't mean that you carry the capacity. And you know what I've seen in the Nigerian Christian? Anybody that is making wave is their mentor. Anybody making wave is now their mentor. After some time, they will see another one. He's my mentor, my father in the Lord. <laughs> Your father in the Lord, and you don't know the process that brought him there. This God has no respect for anybody in any nation. It is only those who love him and seek him. He will show himself. If you do the work, you will get the result. So there is a need for us to build up ourselves. In preparing ourselves for this adventure of breaking new ground. So what does the Bible say? Jude verse 20. Jude has only one chapter, I hope you know. Verse 20. Why is this far not working, please? Please, you can check. I think it's the socket. You can check. Uh, I think the same thing happened on Wednesday. You can check where they pick the light from. Hello? Check where they pick the light from there. But be careful. Jude chapter 1, verse 20. I don't know. This one too is not working. That's the reason we spend money in buying fun. How can we leave it? We don't have AC. We still we see not have fun. This one is not working. This one is not working. So you have put everybody here in. Uh, you won't clap for me for fighting for you. <laughs> Amen. Jude chapter 1, verse 20. What do we have there? Jude 1, 20. It said, but ye beloved, do what? Build up yourself on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. But you beloved, build up yourself on your most holy faith, pray in the Holy Ghost. I think it is our Sunday school that normally do build up. Is this Sunday school? Build up. Can you tell somebody, build up? Build up. Because you need to break new ground. You need to build your spiritual muscles. That is where I'm going this morning. There is a need for you to build your spiritual muscles because... The journey of breaking new ground this year requires that you are spiritually strong. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12. Finally, brothers, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. You need to be strong because the adventure is meant for the strong. It's meant for the strong. You know, when Joshua was to take over from Moses, and God knew that the assignment before Joshua was to divide the land, he would have to deal with so many enemies. And God knew that it's not going to be a mere task. So the earlier instructions to Joshua was what? Be strong and be courageous. About four times. Be strong and be courageous. Have I not told you, be strong and be thou courageous. Do you know why you need to build your spiritual muscles? There are certain steps you have to take this year in breaking new ground that it will take courage. Oh yes, it will take courage. You wake up with a dream, you wake up with a revelation of what God wants to do in your life, and you are saying, can me, can small me do that? That's why you need to build up your courage. That's why you need to build up your capacity. So the Bible says, but ye beloved, do what? Build up yourself on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost.
So I said, your spiritual life, just like your physical body, needs to be built up. Somebody say built up. Needs to be built up. I said there are vital organs of your spiritual life that must grow commensurably as you advance in age. So you cannot afford to remain a dwarf in the spirit while your physical muscles keeps expanding in strength and size. There are so many of us who go to gym, who do jogging, who do sport and all that to build our muscle. You know, you see some people's, hey, Pierre, you, <laughs> you see their chest, <laughs> you're afraid to even hold their hand. They're building their muscle. People like that, if they want to lift something, inside of you cry, and they will just, will just lift it like this. Because the capacity is there. But friends, physical exercise profited little. But godliness profited into all things, having the reward for now and the life to come. So while you engage in physical exercise, there is a need for you to engage in spiritual exercise so that you can build your spiritual muscles for the purpose of breaking new ground when the Lord begins to unveil to you his plan, his purpose, his cancer, his intentions for your life. You know when the Bible says, eyes have not seen, 1 Corinthians 2, 9 and 10, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it come to the mind of any man. The things that God has in store, that means there are, there are many things in store. That God has for you. But you know the challenge there. But he revealed this to us by his spirit. That is why spirituality is the key. He revealed this to us by his spirit. One, for the spirit searches all things. Yea, the deep things of God. So it calls for spirituality, deep spirituality, to access deep things. Otherwise, you will remain at the shallow level. You just be fishing with common men at the shallow level. Praise the Lord. If you have read, I think Gifted Hands or Think Big, I think he's in Gifted Hands film. We are Ben Carson said, he, he had a revelation, he had a dream. We are somebody appeared to him and he was teaching him chemistry, literally. How many of us read something like that? Was teaching him, was teaching, was demonstrating on the board everything. And he woke up to discover that that was the exact thing that came out in the exam. You want to tell me that that one is physical? It's not physical. It's spiritual. It's spiritual. So you've got to build your spiritual muscles if you don't want to remain a dwarf in the things of the spirit. So what am I saying? I'm saying that you need to engage. You need to engage in spiritual exercises. And I just quoted for you 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8. And fortunately for us, Jesus laid that example for us. So the Bible says in Luke chapter 2 and verse 52, the Bible says, Meanwhile, Jesus kept on growing wiser and more mature and in favor with God, and in favor with his fellow man. If you read KJV of that verse, it says, And Jesus increased in stature. And in increase in stature. And it was in favor with God. And favor with man. Jesus grew in the three vital dimensions that you need to grow. Jesus grew physically. He was growing at a point he was 12 years old. At a point he was 33 years old. He was growing physically. He was maturing from a child to, uh, to a teenager, a teenager to a young adult, and he grew fully into adulthood. Jesus grew spiritually in favor with God. That is spiritual growth. And Jesus grew intellectually. In that same Luke chapter 2 from verse 45 uh, upward, the Bible recorded a scenario whereby Jesus was in the midst of the doctors. He was listening to them and asking them questions. And the Bible says 
everyone that listened to him were amazed at his understanding and answer. Luke chapter 2, I think, verse 67. Everyone that had him were amazed. At this point, he was just 12 years old. But this thing was there. Intellectual growth. So are you growing intellectually? And you are so fortunate that in this campus, that is one of the things we have given you access to, to be reading. To be reading one book in a month. One book in a month to enhance your intellectual capacity. One book in a month to connect with greater minds and rub your mind with other minds. You know, in the Yoruba palace, they said, when you have a matchhead that is not sharpened, you know, and you don't bother to go and sharpen it, it will be at the end when everybody is done with his work and you are still struggling with your home. Many of you will soon graduate and realize that you need more than BSc biochemistry, first class, 2 1, to get your feet in life. You will soon realize that you need more than that. You need problem solving skill, you need innovation and creativity, you need exposure and wider connectivity because. The problem in the world are becoming more complex. And you need complex approach, which your lecturer cannot place in your hands within four years. It is not possible. As for these four men, in all matters of learning and understanding, in all matters of learning and understanding, they were fine ten times better. You know why? When you read further in the book of Daniel, Daniel said, I, Daniel, understood by the books. So he was a reader. You get to the interview and they place a question before you that is far, far apart from uh, full science. <laughs> far, far apart. They want to test your intelligent question. They want to test your exposure. They want to test how articulate and organized you are in profound solution to issues. So you are reasoning with them at that level of intellectual platform. Not that you are saying that, uh, sir, I thought you would ask me a question uh, about chemistry or something like that. He said, we are sorry. That's, uh, we are not looking for biochemistry. Uh. We just need somebody with science background. Friends, wake up and grow. Tell your friend, wake up and grow. Grow physically, grow spiritually, and grow intellectually. Wake up. Jesus set that example for us. So there is no shortcut to spiritual growth. You must follow the rules. Even Jesus adhered to the rules. I just read that to you. So it's not a rocket science. If we do what Jesus did, we will have the same result he had. And I want to quickly share with you simple spiritual disciplines you must maintain to experience this kind of balanced growth and to build up yourself as precursors to breaking new ground. I call them simple because they are things that we are familiar with. I call them simple because they are things that we know. And I have about one, two, three, four, five spiritual disciplines you must begin to engage in in order to prepare yourself for breaking new ground. Number one spiritual discipline. Simple. The discipline of prayer. The discipline of prayer. Prayer is a spiritual discipline. You see, prayer appears common, but not everybody is praying. If everybody is praying correct prayer, Jesus will not say men ought always to pray and not to faint. In fact, more often than not, when it comes to ritual prayer, some people will just stand like this. And be looking, because they don't even know what to do again. They don't know what to say. They don't know how to connect. Your prayer life is shallow. The discipline of what? The discipline of prayer. Luke chapter 8 verse 1. And he spake a parable unto them to this end that men ought always to pray and not to fail. Fortunately for us, even in this regard, Jesus set an example. Mark chapter 1 verse 35. A great while before day, Jesus woke up and went to a solitary place. There he prayed. There he prayed. I'm talking of the Son of God himself. I'm talking of the one who created the heavens and the earth. 
He learned obedience through what he suffered. He prayed. Tell your friend, pray. <laughs> I love this song by Ebuka. I will pray, I will pray, I will pray, oh. If I don't pray, Satan will make mess of me. I will pray, I will pray, I will pray, I will pray. Oh. Tell your friend, pray. If you don't pray, Satan will make mess of you. If a day boy can pray, but am I that I will not pray? If if we de po can pray, I will pray, I will pray, I will pray. Oh, tell your friend, pray. <laughs> Otherwise, Satan will make mess of you. <laughs> that was the first song that attracted me to that guy. And I started listening to his powerful, powerful ministrations. Jesus woke up a great while before day and began to blast in tongues. The disciples woke up and they said, where is the master? Before they could access him, they traveled far. The guy has gone into the wood. Hallelujah. When you wake up a great while before day, you know, a great while before day is around 3.30, 4 a.m., 4.30. Men and friends, when you wake up a great while before day, the first thing is Facebook. The next thing is Snapchat, TikTok. You know, sometimes I told somebody, I say, ah, some people, is it that they hold their WhatsApp like this? Because if you put something on your status, as what you put there, land. You just see, click, ah. You see five people, ten people, I say, ah. Even me that put it there, I've not even removed my hand. Okay, pa, 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 pa. They are just commenting. No problem, as long as you do it at the right time. But please, when you wake up first in the morning, maintain the discipline of prayer and not Snapchat. Not TikTok. Not Facebook. Face God. Yeah. Eh? <laughs> not Facebook. Face God. You know why you need to face God? And we all. Second Corinthians 3, 18. And we all. And we all. And we all. With an open face. Beholding as in a mirror. The glory of the Lord. And we are being transformed. From one degree of glory to another. Even by the Spirit of the Lord. And the Lord is that Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is? Why are you not facing book instead of facing God? <laughs> if you are even facing serious uh, physiology book or about chemistry, we we'll know that, okay, you are getting set for test. You are not facing physiology. You are not facing anatomy. You are not facing engineering maths. You are not facing the Bible. You are only facing book. And you know what? That's the reason you wake up depressed. Because when you face Facebook, you begin to see so many posts on Facebook. Pseudo life. And you look like by me. Go like it. You may not have a better way. I want you to know that. I want you to know Have you ever seen anybody that will post a picture that is not good of himself on Facebook? It is when he or she buy a new shoe that he will post the picture on Facebook. As you look like, I will like say, but I feel me now. Look at the shoe. Shiny. You see somebody's uh, click is 77,000. See, so, Oluwami, I just have 112 followers. You just will let me, you came in and you need 30,000 followers. You are deceiving yourself. Do you know those that they call social media content developer? They pay them. They every work every day. So all those 13,000, 100,000, eh, matarare, owo lo nsise yen, owo, 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 owo. And you, you are there, you want to kill yourself because you only have 10 followers. The discipline of what? Of prayer. Please pray. So that Satan will not make mess of you. The second discipline is the discipline of scriptural meditation. Can you say meditation? In other words, a passionate commitment to the world. A passionate commitment to the world. I tell you, friends, one of the vital steps to take in breaking new ground is to go back to the world. Because that is where the revelation of the mind and the purpose of God is domiciled. So go back to the world. In Psalm 1, from verse 1, the Bible says, Blessed is the man who does not walk at the cancer of the ungodly, or stand in the way of sinners, or sit at the seat of mockers. But, that's a very powerful word, but 
his own delight, his passion is in the law of the Lord. And in the law of the law, he meditates day and night. Day and night is a business. It's a business. At the dawn of Joshua's adventure, God through Moses spoke to him. This book of the Lord, Joshua 1 8, shall not depart from your mouth, but thou shalt meditate on it out day and night. Day and night. Day and night. Day and night. I think it was during my prayer time towards the close of the year. I know scripture, but I don't know enough. That God, I want you to increase my capacity of retaining scripture. I, because I saw some people and I admire them. I, you see the way Bishop quotes scriptures. You say, my friend, I say verse 2, my friend. My friend, I say verse 2. He knows what he's quoting. But you, and the Bible says, I don't even know where the Bible, the Bible says, I just know that the Bible says, the Bible says, where? Where does he say even when Satan himself can quote correctly? And you, you want to match Satan. And you can't quote the Bible correctly. Let's make it our resolution this year. A fresh dive into the Bible. You know, uh, Pastor George Adeboye said something in the message. You can do more. That's the title of that message. That really challenged me. He said he has never seen any pharmacy that will not know how to prescribe drug. Prescribe accurate drug. That he has never seen any lawyer that what he saw that we go to law court and say, my Lord, according to section, please just excuse me, excuse me, my Lord, let me quickly confirm. Have you ever seen any lawyer doing that in the law court? He said, let me confirm. I think it should be in section. Please just give me time. It should be in section or whatever. He said, as long as those people cannot do that, he vow that I will not open scripture twice to know where it is. Ah, that's a high standard. That's why I adopted that approach. I don't like the approach of the Bible saying, okay, let's open there. Are you there? Are you there? Are you there? You are looking for one verse. Are you there? Five minutes. If you are there, can somebody read? No, that's not what I mean. Go to, are you there? Are you there? You have not done your work. But his delight is in the law of the law. And in the law of the law, he meditates day and night. There is a result for that. He shall be, is a, is, is an automatic result. He shall be like a, like a tree planted by the water course, which bring forth his fruit in a season, ever relevant, ever timely, ever fresh. Whose leaf does not wither? Whatever he does, prosper. How? Because he's guided from the world. You know, the Bible says of itself that the world itself is a mirror. So when you reflect on the world, it shows you what to, what to do and where to go. That's why the Bible says in Psalm 119, verse 105, it says, your word is a light unto my feet and a lamp unto my path. And it said in verse 130 of that chapter, the entrance of your word, it gives light and it gives understanding unto the simple. I love the version that says, the unfolding, when the word of God unfolds to you, it gives you understanding. In Psalm 19, he gave the catalog of what the scripture can do. He said, by them is your servant one. In keeping them, there is a great reward. Who can discern his error? Psalm 19, the heavens declare your glory. The firmament show forth your handiwork. Day unto day, utter speech. And night unto night, share forth knowledge. And I said, the word of the Lord is this. The testimony of the Lord is this. The instruction of the Lord is this. He said, by them is your servant one. In keeping them, there is great reward. Get a new jotter of meditation. Document your thoughts. Read your Bible. Begin the adventure. The year is seven years, I mean seven days old. Today is the seventh, right? I don't know where we are started. I've gone back to Genesis. Where are you reading at the moment? And what are you reading? Please ask your friend, what are you reading? And where are you reading? Praise the Lord. The third discipline is the discipline of fasting. The discipline of fasting. Hey, yeah, yeah. You are touching something now. Fasting. Me and food. We are friends though. We know they, we know they separate. Five and six. <laughs> but do you know what I've discovered? A lot of us fast unknowingly. Why not be intentional and convert it to re-fast? 
Because it doesn't make sense that you have not eaten till 3 o'clock and you are not fasting. Why not cook fast? And the day you are not, eat. Eat and let the devil know that you are eating. <laughs> the day you are not fasting, eat like an elephant. Oh, yes. And the day you are fasting, tear your stomach. Today is the day of fast. You know what I've discovered from medical perspective and psychological perspective? That when you dedicate your life to fasting in a particular day, if you do it consistently for like five times, you have configured your body to recognize that a spiritual exercise goes on that time. That is why on such day, when you eat, when you normally will not eat, you have a kind of a stomach upset. Because your stomach is not ready for it. Oh, yes. And you see, you can make it happen. Just dedicate one day of the week to fasting. You will be amazed that at the end of the year, you are fasting for 52 days. If you fast genuinely for 52 days in a year, that is A1. That is A1. And you will see the result. You will see the result. If you find it hard to kickstart, get a friend. Will you agree that we should be fasting and praying together every Tuesday? And agree for a time, one hour, to pray together. Spiritual refreshing prayer. You will see the result in your life. You will see the result. Many of you don't know that the result of a lot of sickness is as a result of you not fasting. Because how can you be driving your vehicle? Have you seen a vehicle that you pick up a vehicle from here and you are going to Joss and you don't stop until you get to Joss? I've never seen that kind of a vehicle. They will stylishly stop somewhere to heat. It is as a way of cooling down the engine. After several years, by the time you take off from Lagos to Joss and return to Joss, they go to mechanic to drain the oil. Because they calculate the mileage. But you, you are driving the vehicle of your life throughout the year. No brake. No servicing. That's why your head is deteriorating. Oh, yes, I will show you in the Bible. Fast. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 58, that is where we have the prescription for our fasting. But particularly in verse 8, the Bible says when you fast, your light will break forth as the morning. What is that? Revelation. Somebody say revelation. That's insight. Your light will break forth as the dawn. That's insight. That's revelation. When you fast, that's insight. That's revelation. That is one result of fasting. Number two, and your health shall spring forth speedily. That is health. When you fast, you reap the result of sun earth. And your righteousness shall go before thee. Besetting sin will not be holding you down again. Some of us, little, little sin press us down. Because our flesh is so thick, the spirit cannot break even. That's why you fall to sin repeatedly. But when you subject your, your flesh to fasting, you subdue the power of the flesh over you, you bring it down so that the spirit can rise in revelation. And the Bible says, the glory of the Lord will be your real God. That is power. So for benefit of fasting, loaded in that passage. I want you to make up your mind today. Set the record today. As from this week, I will be fasting on Tuesday. As from this week, I will be, if you are finding that, begin small, small, break at 12. The next time, push it to 3. The next time, push it to 4. The next time, push it to 6. Then you'll be able to do 2 days at a time. 3 days at a time. Then strength comes, you go to 7 days. God empower you, go to 21 days. Then you push it to 40. After 40, now you sabi if you do extra. <laughs> because even Jesus is there, did not go beyond 40. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I fast every Tuesday. I fast on Thursday. Not Pharisee kind of fast. 
and it's good you have accountability partner. If it's good you have somebody you are fasting with. You know, we fast together in the house. So if somebody wakes up in the morning, and I say, ah, it be like say my stomach is doing something. Somebody will ask you, are we not fasting today? You know, they fasted in my house last Thursday. I was the only one that did not fast. So I go back and I'm hungry. I go out that nobody to even attend to me. Everybody is fasting. Muni, why are you not making me to look like a sinner in this house today? <laughs> everybody is fasting. Me, I'm not fasting. But I couldn't judge because I fasted on Tuesday, fasted on Wednesday. So I was sensing that my body need to, to rest. But you see, it puts you on check that you and uh, Tommy say you are fasting. And it just sees you suddenly in BBSF. You are eating meat pie. You say, ah, young man, what, what happened? What about today? He say, what about today? Have you forgotten? Ah, my God. So next time, you will be caught your atomic shape to Larry Milene. So let me just endure. And over time, you won't need any accountability partner to help you to maintain your fasting. Please fast. Number four, spiritual discipline. is the discipline of praying in the Holy Ghost. The Bible says, he who prays in an unknown tongue edifies himself, build up himself. He who pray in an unknown tongue speaketh mysteries to God. Even at that level, the devil surrendered. At that level, the devil surrendered. That's why you rob yourself of a lot of benefit if you cannot pray in the Holy Spirit. Because the devil is just putting his ear on your door. And say, Kilon saw by God. Kilon saw. What is he saying? Eh? You are believing God for a vehicle. That. Speaking in the Holy Ghost is the desire of the Father for everyone is because nobody lay hands on me when it happened to me. And it has been there over 32 years ago. So nobody can say it's fake. It's not fake. It's not fake. Don't mind the Christian. They will just be, they will just be speaking, speaking language that they copy from. They know that we don't understand uh, no pay here. They are not speaking no pay here. It's not no pay. And even if they speak no pay, it's enabled by the Holy Spirit. If not no pay, speak as speak no pay, then it must be Holy Ghost. And when you pray in the Holy Ghost, seek for somewhere that it will be you and God. You will see wonders. Because a lot of time here, you know, you can't, you can't really pick the voice. That you, because when you are speaking in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is revealing mysteries. He's thundering over the scripture, flashing revelation to your spirit. So it's a very powerful mystery. That is why Paul said, I speak in tongue more than you all. I speak in tongue more than you all. You know, I listened to Kwajo Yemade in uh, this concluded at uh, Wolfbeck. And he said, he has problem whenever he travels abroad because every hotel that he lodges, in, they will constrain him from praying. He said he was one, he was in one, and he was praying, and they came and knocked the door. What is going on here? What are you talking about? I'm recording everything. Why are you shouting? I say, ah, I'm not shouting, I'm praying. So he said, you always look for somewhere where it can be alone with God. And you are so fortunate. You have so many places where you can be alone with God here. Unlike OAU, I get to this point. You see the guy there. You get to this point. And you, they are gyrated there. You see this point. You, are, you now have to enter the bush. For you to get quiet place, chapel is there. So many places. Feet prayer is there. Pray in the Holy Ghost. We are going to round up with that. We are going to pray in the Holy Spirit. But the last spiritual discipline, as I close, is what I call the discipline of personal retreat. Being alone with God. Being alone with God. Being alone with God. You see, there are certain things that God will not show you when you are with the crowd. There are mysteries that is only reserved. The Bible says, the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him, and he revealed to them his covenant. It's, it's a lover's word. It's happening around you, I mean, among you now. When you see a brother and a sister that they are just, they are just starting to go out, they will always not want anybody to be with them. No be so. We have done it before now. Eh? <laughs> they will not want people to be with them. If they are talking and Liberian comes, 
You just have a problem, I cry. Lema, I say, move my wig. Kiya te te kura, kura re love because we want to do lovers talk. That is how God also longs every time. Come over, come over here, come over. Let's come to the mountain. Let's talk. Let's talk. Let's. The Bible says, come. Let us reason together. God wants to reason with you. Look at for how long he engaged Abraham. Look at for how long. Forty days he engaged Moses on the mountain. He wrote something for Moses. Create time. In a week, create time of alone with God. That's actually what your quiet time is supposed to achieve. But we are turning to religious stuff. Create time alone with God. It's as if all of you should not come back to campus again because the campus is quiet. I came to my office, quiet. Nobody is around. Nobody will knock the door. Chapney, are you around? Chapney, are you around? No. I just alone with God. Even if you sit down without doing anything, God will be communing with you. You want to tap into mystery, create time of quietness. Because in quietness and rest, Shall be your strength. God doesn't, more often than not, doesn't move in the crowd. Doesn't move in the noise. You know Elijah, he thought God would be in the blast. God was not there. In the earthquake, God was not there. In the running of the mountain, God was not there. But how did they perceive God? In a still, small voice. In a still, small voice. You can embark on a great adventure just by a still, small voice. God speaking to you. Hallelujah. All right, let me quickly add this to this, which will be the sixth now of spiritual discipline. Study. Everybody say study. Study to, to get yourself approved unto God. Please study. Read. 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 Read and read. Read beyond your majors. Read beyond your present academic discipline. Read. I can't forget the example that the former VC cited. Now, when he was an undergraduate, he went for this seminar in the faculty of, uh, is it faculty of social science? First, faculty of art and social science. He got there and Tai Solani came as their guest lecturer. <laughs> and VC said, he saw his mate raising up their hand and arguing with Tai Solani, quoting Aristotle, quoting. Ah. He said, are you sure I'm in the same school with this one? <laughs> these are not lecturers. These are my fellow students. He said, since that day, he packed aside all his agricultural textbooks. He now went for psychology, went for economics, reading international journals and all that. Because how come I may be asking questions? And I can't even understand what they are asking. I can't even fathom what they were talking about. So read. I want you to list 12 books. You are going to read this man. One is presented to you this morning. Twelve books, minimum, that you are going to read. One in a month is okay. It's okay. I mean, this year rather. <laughs> Can't you read twelve in a month? <laughs> List twelve books you are going to read in 2024. Many of you will be asking, how will I know? If you pick up this book, I have two appendices at the back of this. Appendix one. I listed suggested books for personal development. I divided them into three. Purpose discovery book, leadership development book, character formation book. I have over 60, but I've listed. And I noted here, all these 60 books, they are on my shelf. And all these 60 books, I have read them, they are in my brain. I can tell you a little, little bit of what is in all the books. So get the book and see the list. Another for the one you want. I'm planning that we bring all those 60 books, I will bring them down. So that you come and choose the one you want. Read! And let your brain explode. I mean explode. Read. Let your mind be blown up. So that great things can be bad. See, when your mind is small, God will not put great idea in your mind. Because you know that your mind is small to comprehend that great idea. So we give it to those who are ready. Let's be on our feet and let's talk to the Lord. Hallelujah. All right, let's just use like three minutes. Let's pray in the Holy Spirit. Pray in the Holy Spirit. <laughs> pray in the Holy Spirit. Like my good friends, um, you know, student will do. Pray under your bread. Femi and Adesina, pray under your bread. Pray under your bread. Let's begin to pray under our bread. If you cannot hold it again, pray it out. Pray, pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Church this environment. 
Let your spirit that is slumbering, let it come up. Let it come up. Let it come up. Pray in the Holy Ghost. That's the instruction. But ye belongs, build up yourself on your most holy faith. How can you carry dynamite and you are this cold? How can you carry fire on your bosom and you are not burning the chaff of the devil in your life? Pray in the Holy Ghost. This year we are breaking new ground. You are breaking new ground. I am breaking new ground. But you need to build capacity. You need to build your spiritual muscles. You need to build your strength. Because God wants to do amazing things. God wants to do great things. Karama zentore makazata. Zendre mozotoria bakari mozita. Lekete makoza paligasha. As you pray, wait for the signals. Watch out for the signals of the Holy Spirit. Watch out for the inspiration that will be dropped in your heart. Watch out. God is speaking. Karo mazekete korikapa. Lepro makos tende rekezuturia bakashita. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. We're going to do it one more time. If you like, you can speak in your understanding, but I had something that Kojo Yemade said in one of his messages in that conference. He said, when, 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 people, when you hear something, he said there are two ears, the outer ears, the inner ear. When you hear something with your outer ear, you are only hearing what people are saying. And you agree with what they are saying. But when you speak out, that is when you are hearing yourself. He said, if you don't speak out, then you have opened yourself for other people to control you perpetually. So as you pray in the Holy Ghost, speak out in understanding and say, I will be great. I have strength. I have grace. That is when your spirit is speaking what you are saying. No wonder the Bible says, open wide your mouth and I will feel it. But you will not speak. Some of you, you are praying and you are not talking out. The devil knows what he's doing. He said, don't talk, don't talk, don't worry. I will give you what you will hear. And he will be speaking to your ear. Your ear will hear something. Speak out. So I give you two minutes more. Let's speak out. Let's pray in the Holy Ghost. And speak out. Prophesy to yourself. Prophesy to yourself. Karemo sekera masata. Le popo kakaka reke keka. Iso so so reke te kata. E premaro ka sekoriba. Ye kato makozata. Le premakozi. Ika koka poria. Yamaraboko shekelebo. Etremo, we have two more minutes. Le romo sakahimbro mazita. Le premakoria bazita. I will be built up. I will be built up. In the power of the Holy Ghost. The anointing of the Lord is upon me. I am breaking new ground. I will not remain the same this year. I am going from strength to strength. I am moving from glory to glory. Even by the Spirit of the Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. One more minute. I am arising. I am shining for my light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. Darkness may cover the ground. Gross darkness may cover the people. But the Lord will arise on me. And his glory will be seen all around me. It's my light. It's my year of light. It's my year of shining. It's my year of glory. In the name of Jesus. Let's appreciate the Lord. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. To you be all that glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let's celebrate Jesus as we take our seat.